Hello guys, my name is João. I'm going to talk about my project, Cough Disease Classification with ML. So these are the contents of my project. First we have motivation, data acquisition, modern training, embedding, results and conclusion. So first I will talk about the steps that I followed in this project. So first uh, I gather some data. Uh, I searched about uh, data sets and, and some images and what are the diseases that affect coffee. Uh, so I found one data set of coffee leaves uh, and I took some photos with the, the camera that I used in this project in a farm in Brazil. So after I gather some data, I, I train the model and if I am not satisfied with the performance of my model, I go back to data acquisition and gather more data and go back to training until I am satisfied with the results and after that I embed the model in the, the board. So first, why TinyML? in this case. Um, so coffee is a large part in Brazil economy. It, it, Brazil is the largest coffee producer in the world. So it's important for the economy of the of the country. Um, and also classify and, and detect some diseases in coffee leaves are a difficult task so usually specialists do it but they are expensive and it is complicated and you have to wait and it's it's a, a very labor work so if you can do it with uh, ML it would help a lot of people uh, and also farms generally don't have access to internet so you can't use cloud AI or, or uh, another ways to detect the disease without embedding the model in the microcontroller so those are the, the images that I used so these are the images from the data set and and this and this is the the image that I am taking I took so uh, the images are uh, very different as you can see so this has a lot of noise in the background uh, and and this one this one is pretty isolated so this is probably what the model will see in real life so it's good to have um, pictures like this in your data set uh, these are some photos of the farm that I went uh, the data set already used data augmentation uh, and I used in my custom data so I rotated and changed the brightness of the images. Uh, oh, those are the, the same picture as you can see. So I, I generated almost three three times the, the number of images that I have. Uh, so I, I I'm not talk a lot about this <laughs> that, that, that I, I wrote. I uh, will talk more about the the image and I basically will say what what I is written here. So this is the workflow of the, the the model how our code is going to think. So first, the image is in the input for our first model. So our first model classifies between healthy brown spots, rust, and sodding modes. Uh, this is health, <laughs> right? Rust and solid modes are two kinds of diseases. Uh, in brown spots, is um, 
more general kind of disease. So you have a lot of diseases that are classified as brown spots. So I, I did this to not overload or one model with a lot of classes. So I doing this you increase the the accuracy of your model in general if you your your microcontroller or computer can handle this it could be good to do it so if the first model says it's a brown spot the image goes to the second model and classifies between circle spot of forma leaf miner and red spider mite okay uh, these are the final setup so we have our our board in the 3d printed case and a power bank uh, this is the k flash that is used to save the the model and the firmware in the flash memory of the board after you save those files in the flash memory uh, you can run this micropython code and it's basically what I, I talked about early so these are the initialization so the initialization of the camera and the LCD those are the the labels and we load the models in the KPU we set the outputs of our models and we run a loop, a loop that is basically what I told um, the first model runs and if it's a brown spot it runs the second model and displays it on the, the LCD uh, those codes are available in, in the uh, Hexter post so if you want to see more just google just google coffee disease classification with ML there you, you will find it okay so uh, those are the results uh, those images are from the test data set so the model has not see, seen this before in the training so uh, it, it has a, a pretty good accuracy because the leaf is isolated and the brightness is good so we have 99% 100% so it's a pretty good performance Th those are real life <laughs> leaves so uh, it, it, the accuracy lowered a bit uh, a little bit but not too much uh, it here you can probably can't see but is 99% in the rust rust class this is also rust uh, with 90% uh, and this is a leaf miner with 100%. If you fit the the leaf well and it has a good brightness, probably will you will have a, a good result. So uh, these are the confusion matrix and the classification report of the first model. So uh, you can see it's pretty good result. Um, and you can see the the precision, the recall, and the F1 score of each class. And you have the number of photos in in each class. Um, so in conclusion, uh, it's a little bit of what I talked early. So the model performed performed real well real well in in the test data. It lowered a little bit the accuracy in the real life data, but I think it still is a good performance and it can be pretty helpful when used in real world applications. Uh, well, this is for future works, what you can do to improve the, the model. So I think more diseases, especially in the custom data set, so the, the farm that I went does not have all the diseases in the, in the model, so some diseases do not have custom data, 
and it, and I think if you have more diseases with the custom images, will make the model more robust. Uh, more stages of these diseases, uh, I think this is the most important part of the improvements. So I think have more custom data about, uh, I don't know, rust. You have, you can have rust, one little brown spot in the leaf or all the leaf taken by rust. So uh, uh, take all the stages take photos of all stages of the diseases and also you can have more one two or more diseases in the same leaf so you can have rust and leaf minor uh, so this is a, a, a pretty important step to improvement and in general more photos means uh, a better model so I think that's it guys uh, thank you all and be safe